Rebecca, when I want to really know someone, one of the probes I use is to ask them, what are their ultimate questions? What, what are the questions they would most ask, whether or not they had a hope of solution? What are those questions that are driving them? Uh, and it can be from a very uh, practical level to however, however uh, broad and universal it is. So what, what drives you? What are the questions that drive me? Um, there's so many, um, but I think, you know, the, the question that I change my mind about the most. Oh, that's significant. Um, is the question of, uh, the, the fundamental question of, of, of philosophy of mathematics. Mm. What are we doing when we're doing mathematics? Mm. I can be a full body Platonist. Um, I can be a reductionist. I can be a fictionalist. <laughs> I, I, I can hold all of these. Um, and it, you know, it, I think when I'm actually more involved in mathematics, um, I become much more of a Platonist, um, and when I, uh, but, but Platonism seems too mysterious to me, um, and uh, Platonism, where the reality of numbers, those exists numbers is out there, in right? Some, and, in some know, real existence. In some real, yeah. Um, I, there are ways. I mean, there's a kind of structural Platonism where it's embedded in the physical world. There, I've explored every point of view and have believed every point of view in philosophy of mathematics, it continues to completely baffle me. So, so, so what, you say you've changed. I mean, where did you start from in your first recollection when oh, you I thought was, about it? So, uh, when hardcore I was, Platonist? Oh, hardcore. I mean, and I start, it started, you know, very, very young. I mean, uh, numbers were the things that um, um, most fascinated me as a child. Um, and then I had read this wonderful book as a child, One, Two, Three, Infinity oh, by yeah. uh, Gamow. Yeah. Oh my God! So you know, it's not enough that we got infinity; we got <laughs> order of higher orders of infinity. <laughs> yeah. And um, you know, and it, it was just clear to me that you know, uh, yeah, they exist. They exist. You know, how wonderful, and that we have partial access to that world. So I started really as a hardcore Platonist. Um, and but but anyway, so there, there there's that that can that is a question that I'll always I always return to, um, and I don't have any firm point of view about it. So a question that has become increasingly important to me um, is I never really thought all that much about um, questions of uh, sort of ethics uh, that much. You know, I had my views of what <laughs> the right. right way to behave. So something that, that's become, because I've given so much thought to um, religion and the debates between naturalism and, um, and, and, and religion, um, one of the things that, uh, a question that emerged is, we, we talk a, a lot in the uh, sort of what I call organized uh, anti-religion movement that I have very strong ties to, um, you know, the will to believe and people wanting to believe and, you know, having emotional reasons for believing um, and what goes wrong because of that. But I, I think that one of the things that is very, very important in our, um, is also the will to matter. We want to feel, each of us, as if we matter. And it's very, very hard to conduct your life coherently without some sense that your life matters. Um, that's why... But if it really doesn't matter... Yeah. Which the scientific view, I think, would uh, would lead to. In terms doesn't of matter if it doesn't matter. We have to live right. with this with the commitment to its matter. So, so you're fooling yeah. yourself. Uh, you have and, to fool and that, yourself. And you're, you have to. And like you have is, to dress up so you look decent in the world. Exactly. But, can't go out naked. Right. Can't go. Have to um, have to use all we we. Um, in order just to live coherent lives. Like, for example, maybe it's true what that Einstein has told us and the difference between the past, the present, and the future is an illusion. You can't live your life that right, way, course, right? right? And this is where I, I, I talk, think that, you know, the notion of Seller's notion of the, the manifest image of us in the world, what, are, what do we have to believe, even if we can't justify it, in order to live coherent lives? Um, uh, there's a lot built into that, and part of it is, you know, the sense that it matters. You know, even if I decide that life is too miserable, and I commit, decide I must, I have to commit suicide, it's because I, my suffering matters right, so much right, to sure, me, right? Sure, there's sure, no way to sure. really talk to yourself. What follows from that, if that's part of what we need in order to live coherent what follows? lives? That's very important. What follows from that? Must I? 
I, I've come to the view, for example, that just as Wittgenstein had argued there can't be any private language, there can't be any private mattering. If I'm committed to my mattering, and I have to be in order to live a coherent life, I can't make it just a matter of me. Just like language is incoherent if it's a private language, mattering is incoherent if it's, if it's private mattering. I'm only I matter. You have to recognize my mattering. Don't you dare yeah. treat me right. uh, in an offensive way because I'm going to fight back like hell. Um, but once I think that I matter and I think that that um, allows me to demand certain things of others, I'm going to have to broaden that. And this is true even if you know rationally that it really doesn't matter, exactly. as Bertrand Russell said, and, and all the greatness of the humanity and the noonday sun will ultimately be trashed exactly. in, in an exploding sun or something. I mean, even though you know that we're just a small corner or something. Exactly. I have no sense that I really matter in the ultimate scheme of things. When you think rationally, things. but yeah. you have to feel an emotion. Yes. But isn't, isn't therefore the question, why is it that you are a creature, we are all creatures, that we need to ha have yeah. this concept of yeah. matter? Yeah, and I probably it, there's an evolutionary to, explanation for it's, it. it. It's hard to see how any animal has that type of expression. They yeah. have reactions to environment. Well, they fight like crazy to survive. That's how the whole thing works, right? right? They right, want to survive, course, course, or course. you know, or basically, um, you know, their 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 genes want to reproduce um, themselves, and so and we are the creatures that have formed around that, and so we. Do, but but nevertheless, um, I don't care if I matter ultimately um, in reality. I, in reality, um, if I am going to live my life, commit, you know. Not being able to doubt this, just as I can't, I can't justify logic. I'd have to use logic in order to justify logic. There's no you know, non-circular right. way for me to, but I need it in order to have any semblance of coherence in my life. I think we are entitled to everything we need in order to have some semblance of coherence in our life. But then once we have that, once we've laid claim to that, certain things follow from that. Um, and I've become more and more interested in what follows from the fact that I need, and each of us needs, uh, to feel like we matter. What other obligations follow from that? And I think ethics does. I think that's a way to get natural, naturalized ethics. Naturalized ethics? Yeah, in, it is. In, in yeah. absolute sense. In, in absolute sense. So, in that, that sense that yeah, but if it's, I'm going to... But it's yeah. based upon a reality that you've admitted from the start is, uh, is, is, a, uh, is, is a construct, is... is, 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 is is, it might is be. It might not. False. Yeah. It might be. It might not be. So I mean, my worldview is. You can't, you can't is get that, an absolute ethics from a false ontology. Yes, I can because um, if I mean it's absolute incoherent, to your, to your, it's, it's it's a coherent it's ethics, the, but it's, it's not absolute. Well, no. If I am guilty of an inconsistency in laying claim to my mattering, and I demand that you treat me, you know, I'm outraged if you if you. Uh, personally violate my sense of mannering if you right. treat me without the dignity right. that I feel that I am due. Sure. Um, and I, and then, but, but I will not broaden that. I will not universalize that to anybody else. So what, that's, that, that, that's an incoherent view. Um, that is a view that somehow, agree. Agree. yeah, and, and that's enough agree. for me. Internal coherence is enough okay. for me. I don't need so, so, so that's yeah. different than an absolute ethic right. or a relative ethic. That, that's, it's, that's a a different, new, it's a, a different, different kind of thing, right? Fair enough. And that's all that I need. Fair um, enough. I accept it. Are you convinced? <laughs> <laughs> okay.